this has been just the most exciting week. I know it's been years since we've been able to uh, be back in person as communities and schools in West Virginia. Uh, and it's just been an incredible, incredible opportunity to see the energy come together. Y'all came together as if you were longtime friends and welcomed us in, and I just appreciate that uh, so much. Um, if, if there's anything I've been able to see and observe here, uh, it's that everyone comes together as one team, one family, uh, and everyone's been so well. So thank you. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing our morning, uh, our next speaker, our morning speaker today. Uh, I am going to let you all review his bio, and I'm just going to start with the off bio things. Um, hopefully, the things that don't get me fired. Um, but I will say our next speaker has been uh, on bio, right? A longtime advocate for communities, uh, as one of the uh, as the youngest serving member of a uh, city council in the city of San Antonio. Uh, but in his time at communities and schools, uh, he has been one of our proud alumnus who have been advocating for communities and schools, as well as the students that we all serve around the country every day. Uh, but as a leader who joined us in two years, with a lot of, within the last two years, and a lot of uncertainty, he's come on and set a tone of first starting with us as people, as colleagues, as friends and family in the national office. And then one of the first things he's been telling me has been like, I gotta get out to the network. I gotta meet as many site coordinators as I can get to learn more about their day-to-day -day lives from beyond what he's experienced. And that's probably the biggest thing that, uh, that I admire about him. So it's with great pride uh, and great, great excitement that I'm about to introduce to you all Ray Saldana, President and CEO of Communities and Schools. Energy. I want to balance that by saying go herd. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was trained properly yesterday at dinner. Um, 
But here's what's happening, and here's why I think you should just be incredibly proud and why I was so eager and honored to get the chance to finally see you all after two and a half years. It took everything in my power not to jump on a plane in the midst of the pandemic. I joined Communities and Schools March 15th, 2020, which was right at the beginning of everything turning and why I still call San Antonio home even though our headquarters is in DC. Um, but what was on the tops of everyone's minds in the CIS world uh, was what was brewing here in West Virginia. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why. I want you to get a sense of scale here. So um, we at Communities and Schools, you've met our founder, you've met Bill Milliken. Bill Milliken has been at this work building and being invited to go inside schools for the last 45 years, since 1977. But one of the communities that we have been in since about 1983 was actually on the backs of the momentum, the spirit, of then First Lady of Texas, Linda Gale White, and the Governor Mark White, who brought CIS to Texas in 1983. And so CIS of Houston has been around for about roughly 30 years. So in CIS of Houston, it took us about 30 years to grow into 169 schools. In West Virginia, in the span of about three years, we have now grown into 171 schools in just three short years. <laughs> There is something happening here. And, and what is beginning and what is starting here in West Virginia does not end here. There is so much that we are trying to learn about what it's like to partner with strong partnership at the Department of, Educa Department of Education here, what that would look like. And it may be, hopefully in our mind's eyes, we're imagining that, that West Virginia is the first place we actually can achieve our vision, which is our vision as an organization from our founder, for the entire country, but we may actually pull it off in West Virginia before we do it anywhere else, which is to be in every Title I school in the country. It may be that in West Virginia, we get to every Title I school in the state before we do that in any other community, and I'm so excited about that, and I'll tell you why. By telling you just a little bit more about who I am and my journey with communities and schools, so um, Michael mentioned a few things about um, my work prior to communities and schools two and a half years ago. So two and a half years ago before I joined communities and schools, I was, um, uh, I was on the San Antonio City Council. I was an elected official, served for eight years, and I got to serve in the same community on the south side of the city that I was born and raised in. And this is a blue collar, hard working community. And I wanna tell you just a quick story, because it's a quick story about knocking on doors and trying to ask for my job for the very first time. But it's also a story about what our students sometimes struggle with. And it's, it's a little bit of a feeling of sometimes an imposter syndrome. I'm not capable of doing this. I'm not built for it. I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready to take the ne next step. What if I fall and I can't get up? Um, so just a quick story. If you're a good candidate and you're ever running for office, one of the first things you do is um, you have to find out where your voters are. And so in your community, you know the houses and doors you need to knock on. And so I had been practicing in front of the mirror for about a week before I knocked on my very first door. And um, here I was, it was a Saturday morning, and I went up to Mrs. Rodriguez's uh, door. So my, my data sheet had how old she was, how long she lived in the community, whether she'd voted before in the past. So I get beyond the gate, I walk up her driveway, and I knock on her door, and I say, and if you're, if you're good at this, you have to get your pitch out very quickly before they slam the door in your face. And um, I said, Ms. Rodriguez, I'm so sorry to bother you. I just want to come by, introduce myself. My name is Ray Saldana. I'm running for city council. I was born and raised here on the south side of San Antonio. Went to the local high schools, graduated, played baseball, went off to Stanford. And now I want to come back and I want to be your city councilman. And Ms. Rodriguez looked at me and she said, now, did you say you're running for the city council or are you running for the student council? Because you are <laughs> certainly not old enough to be my city councilman. And that was the very first door of 3,196 doors I had to knock on for the next four months. And I said to myself, if every door is gonna be like this, then I don't think this is for me. I don't think I am cut out for this. Um, it turned out several, I, I, there was a lot of doors slammed in my face. I was chased by a lot of chihuahuas all along the, <laughs> the, the campaign trail. Um, but I think what we also so, sometimes struggle with, and I was a student who grew up um, in a community that suffered from a lot of issues and challenges that many of our students face. Um, not just poverty, but some of the challenges that come with 
uh, going to a school and looking for support and not finding it, going back home and looking to try to envision what a future will look like for yourself. And why I'm really excited about this vision of, of communities and schools, your work, you as a site coordinator, getting to as many Title I schools as possible, these are schools that serve students who are dealing with challenges, is that the, the thing about potential is you don't know you have it until someone tells you you have it. And we have heard in so many instances the power of a relationship and trust to build with a student. And so for me, I didn't know I was meeting communities and schools. I didn't know I was meeting a national organization. I didn't know I was meeting uh, a nonprofit. All I knew is I was meeting Mrs. Reyes. And Mrs. Reyes was in the third wing of my high school. And I was a sophomore at the time, and there was a lot of things that I was struggling with. And in, I know in West Virginia, like in many other states that we serve, it's, it, it can be difficult because we struggle with a lot of the things in secret or on our own or in hiding, and we're waiting to find somebody that we actually can trust to share those secrets or those senses and feelings of shame that we're holding back. And Mrs. Reyes came at the right time and the right moment for me. Um, so I mentioned to you that I ran for city council and I served in government and um, some folks asked me why is it that I got so interested in, in government or politics and I told them, well it actually goes back to uh, when I was you know, a, a, um, a seventh grader and I was sitting at the kitchen table with my father and for half of his life he was an undocumented uh, uh, resident. He was not legal for him to live in the country. And I felt a certain shame about that going through school. I felt like I had to hide a little bit about who I was. And um, we would sit at the table because um, he actually was studying after several years of trying to go through an application process to become a citizen of the United States. And uh, to become a citizen of the United States, you actually have to take a citizenship exam. And we were studying, um, and so I was his tutor. Everything from, all right, Dad, you gotta, you gotta name them all this time, you can't miss one. Name the 13 original colonies. Name the three branches of government. Okay, here's a quote, don't forget who says this. Who said, give me liberty or give me death? And that was actually a question, I, that was one of my favorites, and I will pose to you all if you know who is the quote who said, give me liberty or give me death. I think I heard it on this side. Patrick Henry. My father would always trip up on that one. Um, but there was, for us, in my family, just a lot of, of un unknowns about what would happen if we shared this secret. And I remember at the time meeting Mrs. Reyes, and there was always something I held back during middle school, but it was something that I think she understood about who I was, what my identity was, and I was just worried to share it because I thought it was something that would make me feel or seem as if I was inferior or couldn't compete. And my biggest fear was the, the thought that this would keep me from doing things I wanted to do, like not only graduate from high school, but maybe go off to college. And Mrs. Reyes was somebody who not only sort of walked me through to feel a sense of pride about who I was and where I came from, but at the same time, she was connecting me and my father um, to how does, how, you know, my father especially who didn't speak English at the time, where he could go to find English courses at the local community college at the same time that she was getting me in a summer program so that I could take some college courses to feel and experience what college was like for somebody who had never done it in their family, who had never known anybody in their neighborhood who had ever applied. And not only that, um, she actually helped, she actually joined me. Uh, this, is a, this is something that it is not under your job description. This is this other duties as assigned as a side coordinator because you care and you love the students who you're building relationships with. She joined me for his citizenship ceremony. And it was this moment that I would just never forget um, when he raised his hand and swore his oath and became a citizen. And he told me and my siblings this amazing just testament about his belief in what this would allow for his son and his daughter and his, uh, his children, which is that we would have access to the American dream. And for him, he didn't know how to get there. He knew it was a marathon that he wouldn't be able to run. It'd be a passing of the baton to his, to his children, his next generation. And the, the fact that Mrs. Reyes was there and joined with me, she was part of that process for me to inspire and feel like I could reach that American dream because I knew I wanted to go to college and I was ready to go to the local community college until she saw something in me and saw something in my grades. Of course, we have data sharing agreements with our school districts. 
And she said, you know, I think you can apply not just to the University of Texas at San Antonio, I think you should actually apply to some schools outside of state. And if you test well enough, we'll get you into test prep courses. We can pay for them at community schools. We have a fund to do that. Again, I was meeting Ms. Reyes, and I wasn't, didn't think I was meeting community schools. I just met somebody who cared about me. And in that work, um, you know, we, 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 she did something incredibly special. Again, other duties as assigned where she put me into a program that would allow me to, for the very first time, live away from home for about two or three weeks. And you would have thought my, you would have shocked my mom's system to say that I would be going away somewhere because I was her, in Spanish there's this term, mijito, which is an endearing term to say, no, you're not taking my little boy away. He is gonna be in my home for as long as possible. And what she was doing was walking my parents through the concept of letting me go off to college if I got accepted to a place that was outside of San Antonio. And um, I'm sure that's a, a, a feeling that you may feel for some children or you may talk to some families who don't want to let go of their children. Um, but it was just this amazing relationship that I was able to build with my site coordinator. I say that because there's a lot of science to the work that we do. We talk about what it, what it looks like to create a developmental relationship. How do we measure through, through data? How do we measure goals from one year to the next of our students? And Mrs. Reyes was doing all of that behind the scenes that I couldn't see. And I'm sure she was also probably dreading a lot of the system and data work that she had to do at the same time. But the reason that I, I, I sort of talked through this is to just tell you about all of this, these moments um, that we sometimes doubt ourselves, but we also doubt whether we can share who we are and who we, who we can become. Because there's a, there's a phrase, uh, or at least a quote that I love sharing by a poet named Alice Walker which is that the most common way we give away our power is by thinking that we don't have any. And I say that not just because of a student who may feel like they're not worthy or can't take on the next step, but also because we as adults have a power. The, the theme of this institute is the power of you. We have a power to share with our young people, to see a path, to understand their potential. And it is in many ways you planting these seeds that Shannon talked about that you're, you may not see in that year or two. But Mrs. Reyes is somebody, we talk about our, our, our mission statement, which is to surround students with a community of support to ensure that they uh, 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 succeed in school and achieve in life. Mrs. Reyes was not somebody I said, okay, I've graduated high school, I've gotten my acceptance to Stanford, I'll never see you again. Mrs. Reyes was still somebody who's on my cell phone, who I call, who I actually ended up calling because um, I'd never gotten in an airplane. I was 18 years old and I was about to go off to California to go to school and my parents had never been on an airplane either and I just didn't know how I was gonna deal with TSA or the bags or the tickets and the first person I called once I finally got on the plane and I hugged my mom and dad was Mrs. Reyes. And Mrs. Reyes, I don't know what to do. What's the next step here? Again, these other duties is a sign. Um, and, and I was thinking about that story yesterday because I spent a little bit of time with our team here from West Virginia. And uh, I got to meet Aaron Boyd. Let me know if you know Aaron. Um, so um, Aaron, Aaron and I were, were talking and she was telling me about one of her most famous alumni and uh, her name is Kelsey Dolan, is that right? So I didn't know about Kelsey Dolan and so after I left dinner, I went back home and I was just watching YouTube video after YouTube video of Kelsey Dolan's fame as an auditioning member of American Idol. And you, they, I don't know what's happening and I can tell you this story and get it off my chest because I'm 1,200 miles away from my home in Texas, but you would have seen me in front of my phone just teary-eyed and emotional watching uh, Kelsey Dolan because they did a wonderful job of telling her story. Uh, Kelsey Dolan, proud community member of Boone County. Uh, Boone County. <laughs> I hope I got that right. Yeah, just the one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they, they told this wonderful story about who she was and the struggle she had after losing her grandmother. And um, she was, she, in one scene, she was leaning on her grandfather's shoulder and talking about how she was afraid to get on an airplane because she'd never been on an airplane before. But I don't know if it was a combination of her voice during the audition, the singing, or Lionel Richie, who was also crying, listening to her, but I just couldn't hold it in. And I tell you that because um, my wife is so upset at me because I never cry. And she said, you didn't cry at our wedding, you didn't cry with our two babies. I, I, 
but recently, I don't know what it is, but I just can't keep it together these days. And I was watching Kelsey Dolan, <laughs> and just inspired by her story, but also feeling just like, gosh, I can almost feel her anxiety. I can almost feel her nervousness. And, um, and there was one thing she said about the judges. It was uh, Katy Perry and uh, 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 Lionel Richie. It's like, gosh, they believe in me so much. I really wish I believed in myself as much as they do. And I, I just, you know, I, I couldn't help but sort of think about how most recently in the last few, I just couldn't, I can't hold it together when I get to meet some of our site coordinators and some of our students. I was in southeast um, rural Washington about a month ago in a place called Benton Franklin. And I was meeting with some students and they were part of a panel and one of the students was talking about her journey. Uh, she, was, she was transgender, was transitioning, and she was abandoned by her family because of it, because of who she was and what she was dealing with. And she didn't want to let that be a secret, so she let them know and they didn't accept that for her. But her site coordinator was somebody who stepped in and provided her not just a home, but just a path and a vision and a future. And again, I just couldn't help myself because of all of the work that was going into that site coordinator and that love for that student. And then three weeks ago, I was in, um, I was with our CIS of San Antonio team, Music Schools of San Antonio team. And we were traveling about an hour outside of San Antonio to Uvalde, Texas. And this was right off the heels of the tragedy and the shooting inside Robb Elementary. And our team was getting set up to set up some offices and some office space. We had some clinically trained staff who understand how to deal with group settings, tier two of grief, and one-on-one -on -one with not only the students, uh, but also some of the teachers and staff. And here's the moment that really struck me, which I think is the overlying message to what is incredibly important about the work you all are doing. It was the very first day of the very first week of summer school, two weeks after the tragedy. And we didn't know whether we were to expect any students or any families to be dropping off their students, still reliving, reliving the memory and, their, and the, the recovery that happened, is happening in that community. But that very first day, the very first week, there was more students that showed up to that summer school that they had expected and they were prepared for, which tells you an important message about what school, the role school plays in our communities and for our students. It was still, in those circumstances, the safest place for those communities who were struggling, who needed to find resources and support. And so in that way, I just, I guess, again, couldn't hold it together. Um, about the work that was happening and the selflessness of these site coordinators who, it was their summer, and they were saying, I know we've got work to do, we're not even in Uvalde, but I'm gonna go down there and support the work, um, and we're now applying the model of communities and schools uh, in Uvalde in the next school year. And so it is just, I think, this incredible power we have here in West Virginia to build on this incredible momentum um, that I am just eager and excited to see. Because again, what I will tell you, we've been in this work for 45 years, but the chapter that we are turning in West Virginia, what happens here is really going to change our organization in a significant, significant way. And as you think about going back into the work, I want to make sure that you remember this piece around the power that you have to transform a student's life. Even, I tell folks, our work is not complicated, but it is hard. It is not complicated to find the students who need our help. We've got access to attendance records, to behavior records, to academic uh, uh, results. We can find the students. We know where they are. That's not the complicated piece. The hard piece is actually going to that student who is pushing you away all year and saying they don't need your help. And what they're really doing is testing you if you'll actually stay with them. Because enough people probably haven't come up and shown that they can be trusted for them to open up about the things that they are struggling with. It is not complicated, but it is hard when you're gonna do a, a, a site visit, visit a home, knowing that there's a high chance that nobody's gonna actually answer the door, but you are committed and you're gonna write a letter that says, I miss you and I wanna see you. That's hard work and it's not complicated, but that's the work that we're trying to replicate. And I am just um, in awe of what is continuing to happen here in, in West Virginia. Uh, I have been so eager, that's one of the reasons I've been, this is actually my very first time in the state. Um, but again, I was itching to get out here because of what is happening here that I think is going to tell the story of not just our organization, but what, the, what we're doing to change the work inside public schools. Bill Milliken has a line that says, a, that's before students could get turned on to learning, they need to be turned on to living. And living really is the hard part for many of our communities all across the country. 
And so in the ways that we're seeing this happen in different states and different communities, um, it really is an energy all its own here in West Virginia that I'm eager and excited to get to share in. Uh, but we know the work is not done. And um, if you'll allow me a, a point of personal privilege, I can tell you a little bit about where it is that, uh, that we think we're going to go and who are the folks who are responsible for making this happen. Um, this is what I might do, if you'll allow me. I'm going I'm to walk to the back, because I just saw two high school sweethearts walk into the room, and I want to introduce them and tell you more about where we're going in West Virginia. Say a few words before you jump in. Yeah. Now, here's something I don't always. Well, let me. Let me. I think you can still hear me. Now, here's something I don't always get to do. Um, when I met communities and schools, I told you I met Mrs. Reyes. Before Mrs. Reyes gets to the third wing of my high school, communities and schools has to get to San Antonio. Before communities and schools gets to San Antonio, they have to get to Texas, and all the way in between, there are speed bumps and potholes something that could change in the way of policy or decision making or funding that it just doesn't become possible. In my mind's eye, as I think about the relationship I've built with Mrs. Reyes and how she continues to be a powerful force, like you will be for many students, in my mind's eye, I try to think about who those people are who are working behind the scenes with sheer will and commitment and passion to bring reality to an idea. I think about um, individuals, but I can never really see them. Today, I get to see them. Today, students who you do not yet know, who may not yet be born, who may not yet know their potential, are going to think in their mind's eye who they might thank because you stepped into their lives. And it is with that that I get to introduce you to two individuals. But to call First Lady Kathy Justice a partner would undersell what she means to the organization, this expansion, this movement inside West Virginia public schools. She is a champion beyond any other that we've ever seen. And I told you about the scale of growth we've seen in West Virginia. We haven't done that anywhere else in the country. And I think it is because of the fuel that she pours into the engine of this work every single day. And the reason I think we have to thank because of all of this coming together. And for folks who have said, CIS is the best job I've ever had. I get to work directly with students. Um, it happens for you like it'll happen for many other students because of this work. And so um, one line comes to, to mind for me, which is that uh, there's a Greek proverb that says that societies grow great when people plant trees whose shade they will never sit in. And to think about where this work is going to take not just West Virginia, but the rest of the country because of what is happening here is amazing to see that tree being planted by our governor and, of course, our champion, First Lady Kathy Justice. With that, let me please introduce First Lady. I'm so glad to be here today. I know you all have had a wonderful time. Uh, I know you've learned so much. You've shared so many. Uh, and Ray, thank you. I, here we go. I just got kind of all excited. <laughs> but thank you. We are so happy that Ray was able to be with us today. And uh, he just certainly brings so much enthusiasm. And he's a, a prodigy of the program. And he's just done well. And so he's a great mentor for all of us. Um, everyone in this room, Jim is here with us today, which was, uh, we rode up here together and we got here in one piece, which was really good. So, <laughs> um, but you all were chosen to do what you do. Uh, you all are so much involved in all the students' lives. They know that they can come to you and feel good about who you are, what you're there for them. Uh, for and uh, as we saw the alumni uh, students the other day, they just absolutely just have a bond that they're going to have with you all from now on. And please be that one person in their life that cares, and that's all they really need. One person that really knows they care, and you guys are that per people in person. And uh, 
we're always here to help you all just do anything. And again, thank you all for coming, and it's just been great. Now, I just want to thank a couple of people that are written down so I won't forget them. First of all, I want to thank Vicki and Katie and Randall, uh, Vicki Shannon, Katie Morris, and Randall Reed Smith, who have uh, gone with me everywhere and done everything uh, for years with the program and just are really instrumental in some of my good friends. Um, Ellen, okay. Um, our tourism cabinet secretary, Chelsea Ruby, uh, she was here. She was responsible for some uh, goodies that you all got, and she's really instrumental in helping us. Uh, Ellen Capilani, who is a lawyer with Jackson Kelly, underwritten the luncheon the other day, underwrote the luncheon the other day, and we were really thankful that she did that. She had had foot surgery and wasn't able to be here, but she's on our advisory council and has been just a real positive force on that. Um, as I said, Randall, uh, my great friend, Jim's great friend, he's our state curator and he does a wonderful job. And believe me, he is really appreciated throughout the state. Uh, Michael from our national CIS, thank you. Uh, you've been a, with us from the beginning and uh, we want you to go the distance with us, so don't give up on us, okay? <laughs> also from the national CIS office, Laura Van Dusen, um, who supports Tracy and Cynthia, who are responsible for this today. They just, Laura, you're just very much appreciated, and uh, I guess you're here. I don't know if you're here or not. Okay, all right, hi. But uh, thank you all for all you do. Uh, Ray, that was a great speech. You just got right to our heart, and you know, we all could relate to you so much. Uh, I hope you enjoy your stay in West Virginia. It's a little different than Texas, I'm sure, but we listen. <laughs> We love both places. Um, and we want to, you to go over the finish line with us to try to finish in all of our 55 counties in the state. So that's what we want to do. So let's do this. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, it's all up to you all, just you. You are the people that are responsible for all this, all the success. And uh, it really goes to the power of you. Uh, I wish you all many good days ahead of you, a great, wonderful rest of the summer, and we'll start school this fall. And the counties that we haven't been in to visit, we will certainly come and see you guys. So let us come in, okay? All right, thank you all. Thanks, thanks for the introduction, Kathy. <laughs> Lord, the only, the, only, uh, the only thing that is really a little bit worse than that is if I brought Baby Dog, you know, nobody would want to hear anything that I had to say. <laughs> uh, Ray, you know, thank you so much. Thank you for all you do each and every day. Uh, I've got to tell you this real quick and everything, but Kathy seems so innocent, doesn't she? Just so quiet and so good and so innocent. And just think about this little girl with, with you know, hair down below her waist and everything, and Marshall University, just pretty as she could be, and you know, and I'm her boyfriend, and she's surely my girlfriend and all that, and you know what's happened since then. We've been together for 700 years now. And, but, but nevertheless, you know, we were in the middle of the winter, a good friend of mine, and, and you know, we were fishing and everything, and we had to use this bait, and at, at the end of the fishing, we were on 12 Pole Creek, and it was solid mud, and it was in the middle of the winter, and it was cold as it could be, and I decided, well, there's no point in the, the rest of the bait just dying. I'm just gonna go out on the boat dock and just release what we've got, little minnows and stuff like that and everything, into the stream. And so I'm bent over on this old dilapidated boat dock in a stream running solid mud in the dead middle of the winter. And the next thing I feel is somebody go poof on my back and I'm going head first in the middle of this river. And I just threw my hand back like that, you know, like anybody would. And there was that incredibly long, beautiful hair. <laughs> and as I went in this way, she went in this way. And then when she came up, the first words that were said is, help me, I can't swim. <laughs> you know, so nevertheless, uh, don't, don't buy into that little innocence and quietness and everything.
But let me tell you just real quickly. I've seen lots of stuff. You know, you got a lot of white hair. You've seen lots and lots and lots of programs. You've seen lots of people make a lot of efforts. See a lot of people stand up on their soapbox and say how great this is and how great this is. I'm really involved with kids because I've coached forever and a day. Absolutely, I'm in all kinds of schools all the time. I have seen program after program after program and lots and lots and lots of good. There's nothing like this. There is nothing like what you're doing. At the end of the day, it is the most successful program that I have ever seen, irregardless to Kathy and I. The most successful program that I have ever seen. And not only does it come from a Ray or whomever, but first and foremost, it comes from all of y'all. Every last one of you. The job you've done is off the chart. The lives you've touched, off the chart. Absolutely, at the end of the day, a lot of you at some point in time will have white hair and it'll look like me. God knows I hate that for you. <laughs> but really and truly, at one time you gotta remember I was skinny and had brown hair. And then I grew another body. <laughs> but, and a lot of y'all will do the same thing. But you will look back on this with pride like you can't imagine. Absolutely, without any doubt, you have truly been the best of the best. This started in an infancy beyond belief and has grown now to 70,000 kids or whatever it may be, and I think 31 counties, and it is unflat believable what you are accomplishing. If all you did all together was you changed the life of one kid, it would be worth 100,000 times all of y'all if you changed one life. And you're changing lives after lives after lives. It is really incredible what you're doing. I couldn't be more proud to be a little part of it. Kathy is absolutely so proud and busted at the seams all the time. You know, it is just absolutely amazing. And so with all that as your governor, all I can do is congratulate you, thank Ray, thank all of you for all the participation and everything you do for changing that one life. But you do it again and again and again. Someday, you will have a pride like you can't imagine. I hope you have it right now. But it will absolutely be busting out all over you someday. Now, with that being said, I think Kathy's got a, another big announcement to make, and then, and then, really and truly, I'll go back to being baby dog's dad. <laughs> I didn't mean to leave this out, but I did for the regional uh, reps that we have, all the work that you do, and you all just kind of all coordinate your areas, and it's just wonderful work. So again, thank you all. Uh, where are Shannon and Cole? Are they, where, are they here? Shannon, why don't you guys come on up? This is our first therapy dog that we placed. It was in McDowell County, and he's thriving, as you can see. Uh, Jim hasn't seen him since that day, and he's, he's blossomed. He's a little sore. He and Jasper went for a run outside. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, he's got a As we've told you all before, if you haven't had the opportunity to go to any of the schools and see the dogs, just to see the children's reaction to them are just wonderful. It doesn't matter how young or how old, everybody loves the dogs. And Shannon is just doing a great, great job with Cole, and uh, he has a nice home down there. He looks great. And uh, Shannon, I was telling Jim about how you, in your backpack, had his thermos of water. Oh, I didn't know we had... Oh, okay. These are great. It's a great experience. 
Well, again, thank you gals and, and the dogs, and you all have fun, and you're just doing a great job with all this. It's so good. Uh, we have five counties that are- Wait just a minute, wait just a minute. I want to say one thing real quick. <laughs> he always does. Okay, it. And, and it's just this. I do, I, I just kind of breezed right by this and everything. I should have said this, but Kathy's got an incredible group that we work really with her, and that's, you know, Vicki and Katie, no question. And she said, and Randall goes and comes with her and does all this stuff. And Randall's great too. Now Randall's completely crazy, and we all know that. <laughs> but but he is so good. He is so much stuck on on. And I just always want to say something really sweet and nice about Randall because he is eat up with enthusiasm, and he is absolutely he is our curator of the arts, and it is so 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 important. You know, let me just say this last thing, and I'll be quiet. And, and this is just all there is to it. At one point in time, early on, when I was your governor for the first go-round, we were in pretty tough shape as a state. In fact, we were in horrible shape. And one of the things that was brought right to my attention that a lot of folks wanted to do was get rid of the arts and, and, uh, and the culture because we were just spending money over there, and we didn't really need to do that. And at the end of the day, I think when you start selling off your soul and who you really are, that's who we are. That's absolutely us. Our arts and culture in this state are who we are. They're our fabric of who we are. And so I said, no way, no way. And Randall took the ball and has run with that like nobody's business. And I really thank you for all your work with music schools and everything. And, and this is Kathy now again, and I'm introducing her. All right, Jim, you can read the. You go. Okay. All right. These are counties that will be coming on board in the fall or the summer. I, if you are from any of these counties, just stand up and we'll see. Logan, anyone here from Logan? Great, thank you. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you guys in the fall, okay? All right. Um, Marshall. Yay. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Thank you, we'll be up to see you guys. All right. Monroe. time I hope you have and I'm sure you have and uh, we'll see uh, all of y'all will be in the schools this fall and this winter and uh, if you need anything at all call us call Vicki we, we'll say call Vicki she'll pass the word thank you guys